Hey dudes, so in the ice skate upcycle video, I used a rusty ice skate blade to make a knife. Because the ice skates turned out to be mild steel instead of hardenable high carbon steel, I used them as the outer layers for a sand mine knife with a core of 1084 high carbon steel. All went well, but I vowed to return to this project and add carbon to the remaining ice skate, making it high carbon steel so that the skate itself could be used to forge a hardenable knife. Hey, listen up for a second. I make knives out of lots of strange stuff. Check out this knife forge welded from 1 8 inch rods. If you like this sort of thing, I put links to videos of this and other cool projects in the description below. All right, on with our project. All right, as you can see, I'm gonna to wanna to press this a little flatter before I carburize it. So I'm gonna take it to the press, press it flat. It's gonna sort of bend this way, I'm sure. And then we'll cut it up into chunks, throw it in our canister and get our groove on. It's really interesting. The carbon in our graphite powder will gasify at high temperatures and diffuse through the air into the steel. It diffuses slowly and it's not very efficient, but we can mitigate these problems and help this along by adding sodium bicarbonate or baking soda to our graphite powder. You'll see me do that. Now for every hour or two at high temperatures, we should diffuse carbon about half a millimeter to one and a half millimeters into the steel. Lots of things affect the penetration of carbon, such as the alloy composition. So this may or may not work very well. After we get enough carbon into the outer part of our ice skate blade, we can do something like cut, stack, forge weld things, draw it out multiple times to help homogenize that carbon throughout our piece of metal. Here it is, that graphite powder and baking soda mixture I was telling you about. Now in the past, when I've done this, I've used a 10% mixture of the baking soda and I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Yeah, here we go into the oven where it will heat up to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit and stay there for about two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what this is supposed to look like, but I don't see any blisters or defects or overcooking like I've seen in the past with some projects. So let's go and take this and spark test it and see how much carbon there is. First up is a bit of our original ice skate blade left attached to the skate. Sparse, long, non-bursty stuff uh, like mild steel. Here's our carburized steel and damaging it. That's a lot of short, bursty sparks. We like to see that in our high carbon steel, but I'm already wondering if we've overdone it a bit. After a water quench, the hardness is over 65 HRC, very hard. So I've sanded this to 600 grit, this sort of diagonal cross section, and I'm going to etch it and see if there's some differential um, etching there from carbon being around the outside, more carbon being around the outside, less being in the middle, you know? See what happens. Well, there's no sugar coating this. This is exactly opposite of what I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting more carbon around the outside to etch darker and mild steel on the inside to etch lighter. And this is the exact opposite. So I don't know what, uh, I don't know. Maybe I made cast iron and cast iron is etching lighter than the middle, which is now carbon steel, by carbon steel. I don't know, man. Oh my God. All right, so I've ground down all the way around to the interior dark etching core, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go spark that, right? I'm gonna see how that sparks. Let's go. Yeah, the outer layer doesn't look like high carbon steel. It looks like it has too much carbon, like it's maybe cast iron. I can't make a knife out of that. But the core is sparking great. Yeah, that's, that sparks like high carbon steel. 
And so I think there's excess carbon around the outside, and that core is what we need. All right, there's too much carbon in here. This is either cast iron or something close to it. It's going to be too brittle to make a knife out of. That middle black portion that we saw end on end is perfect. I think that's still pretty high carbon, but it'd probably make a good knife. But the problem is there's not much of it. If we ground all this away and we're left with those thin little strips in the middle, we could stack them and forge all them together, but it still wouldn't be enough knife uh, material after all is said and done to make anything more than a tiny little, maybe like two that. inch blade. With a so, in here, we can I think throw the this away stack is and forge weld this. You throw this away, layers or something like mild steel, steel, cut it, going. fold it, repeat and a bunch. You leave all that for long Another enough, option which will both absorb the extra and, and forge that will provide a sink for the carbon. The idea was to put carbon pour material in between these layers and it would absorb the extra carbon, especially out of this area here. And that would equalize everything and homogenize. And with enough heat, enough folding, enough time in the forge, you would end up with a piece of steel that, you know, through pure guesswork would have the right amount of carbon to make a knife edge. I decided that just wasn't worth it. So, since this outer edge has too much carbon and the middle has just the right amount of carbon, what I'm going to do is grind away this this area on both pieces so that we're left with just this against this like this and then we're going to forge weld this together now the issue is as I forge weld this together there's going to be a carbon gradient between the too much carbon and the just right carbon and carbon is still going to diffuse into the middle so to handle that problem and keep this carbon just right, I'm going to put some iron on the outside. And so hopefully the extra carbon will go into the iron instead of into this area, right? So it will be like this. So again, uh, hopefully the extra carbon goes this way instead of this way. Then we'll just have to grind this away and this will be our sort of sand my knife steel, right? This this will be our edge right here. Fingers crossed. Yeah, let's flux this baby up and get it up to forge welding temperatures so we can get this thing welded up. At this point, I'm super, I'm super skeptical. Like this is either gonna be a uh, crazy, unsuspected success, or this is just gonna fall flat on its face. Man, look at that high carbon steel core. This looks much better than I was hoping for. So we're gonna flatten this out some more, start grinding a knife to shape. And while that's going on, I'll tell you about the heat treating. Obviously, I have no idea exactly what type of steel this is or the carbon content, so heat treating is pretty much guesswork. I did normalize it at 1600, 1550, and then 1500 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes each, and then quenched from 1500 degrees and parks 50. The as quenched core hardness was just over 65, so I walked up a temper 
from 350 degrees Fahrenheit slowly incrementally up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit checking harnesses I went and basically at 400 the harness came down to just over 60. So there it is, the ice skate blade is now a knife blade after adding carbon to it. Very cool. Should I do some cut testing? Yeah, maybe next time. That's a good idea. I'm more than thrilled with this result. Can't believe this uh, came out so well. What do you guys think?